I look at uh, Miami's offensive personnel. No question, the O line is improving, and and that's why I, I feel that this job looks a lot more attractive on paper this year than it probably did last year because the offensive line looks dramatically better on paper with the transfers and the true freshmen Miami's been adding. Uh, I think Miami has a nice stable of running backs. They looked like they had a nice stable last year. Also, nobody could stay healthy. You know, Tyler Van Dyke, great arm talent. I get it. He's polarizing Tyler because he didn't have a great year last year. He's not very mobile, but. You know, we've seen in 2021 how good Van Dyke can be. We all know wide receiver has been inconsistent. So if you're somebody like Jason Candle or Brian Johnson or Doug Nussmeyer and like you're looking at the Miami offensive coordinator job, like how do you think as a prospective Miami offensive coordinator, do, do you think, hey, this is personnel I could really do great things with? Well, you could be any type of coach and make this work. Uh, look at the guys they, they're they bringing in, Nathaniel Joseph, um, Washington, the two guys that are really twitchy. That's something that Miami has historically been able to get. And you can put those in any kind of offense. Guys that make defenders miss never go out of style. Uh, the player that I'm most excited to cover this spring for the Hurricanes is Royal. He's the tight end. He's a very athletic kid. Again, in this era, tight end is a relative term. He could play attached in a traditional yeah. sense, like, yeah. you know, guys that like Shockey did for the Hurricanes 20 years ago. But at the same this time, is, by the way, we probably won't see him till fall because he's he's recovering right. from an ACL. So I don't think we're gonna I'm see still going to ask about yeah. him. I, he's, yeah. he's so important because you've got to have an athletic flex tight end. And, but he's one of those guys. And they got Riley coming in and, you know, they, they've got players there. So you can come out in 22 personnel, two running backs, two tight ends, go five wide or go traditional and put the defense in a lot of problems. Miami's offensive personnel starting this fall, while some of it is young and some coming off injury like Arroyo, is still very talented. So no matter what scheme you run, it should be an exciting and an enticing opportunity. So sticking on the offense, when you talk about players coming in, uh, guys I'm really excited to cover spring and fall. Uh, the new running backs coming in, uh, thunder and lightning, right? You get Mark Fletcher, who's powerful, but a complete back. Chris Johnson, who's a track star. He's got that home run speed. Uh, how do you think that um, that Fletcher and Johnson, how can they complement one another in Miami backfields for the next few years? I think it's pretty simple. Uh, the speed that Johnson has, for those who don't know, verified 10.45 in the 100 meters, he won the Florida State Championship in his division. He can flat out fly. I've seen him up close at a practice at Dillard. His first step quickness, whether he's in the slot, whether he's playing traditional tailback, offset, running the option, RPO, he's not fun. Mm -hmm. If you put him in the backfield with Fletcher or another running back for the Canes, he can be utilized in a lot of different ways. And then Fletcher in the All-American game in San Antonio, he caught a long touchdown. Yes. He's 215 pounds, 220 pounds. He's a guy that can move, too. He, he, he's so underrated. Oh, he's a big, bad, big, big, bad, blah, blah, blah. He is a very versatile, versatile kid, and I think the Miami can throw the ball to him as well. So, again, regardless of who they have, a coordinator, they have guys that are with size, with speed, with the ability to catch. They can use them in a variety of ways, and I think both of them will complement each other very, very well in Miami's set for their future. I, I don't know how, how much did you uh, did you cover, if at all, uh, Trevante Citizen? You know, he was in Louisiana coming out of high school, but uh, I, I didn't know. I, I knew obviously he was a highly rated guy, four star. Sure. Didn't watch much of him in high school, but then I, I watched him practicing last year before he got hurt, and he's he's a monster. Like he, uh, you know, this was eight, eighteen years old when I was watching him in fall camp. He, he looked, he had like just the, and I know people are going to be like, oh, you're getting too crazy over this guy, but just as far as the stature and the build, he looked like an NFL running back already at eighteen years old. It's crazy. He was from Western Louisiana, outside of a major metropolitan area, but at the same time, think about the following: A and M wanted him. LSU wanted him. Miami wanted him. Don't look at the location. Look at the offers. Is that coincidence? I mean, these are programs that get big time running backs pretty much every year. And they wanted Trevante Citizen. That's point number one. Number two, running back is probably the easiest position to evaluate. You turn on his huddle film, about three or four clips in, I remember saying to myself, why isn't this kid rated higher? And the answer is back to point one. 
Ah. He doesn't play in Tampa. He doesn't play in Atlanta. He doesn't play in Miami. He played out in the sticks. And that's that's typical Louisiana. It's per capita like the highest in the country for guys at the NFL. And he's a great example for that. Miami got a steal. And if he comes back healthy, he's a guy that could be, he could end up being the starter this year. It wouldn't shock me. He has yeah. all the physical attributes you're looking for. And again, Miami's running back room is pretty darn good. 